Welcome back. What a delightful change in the weather. It's unbelievable. I mean, really unbelievable. Three days ago, I still had 10 inches of snow in my backyard. Most of it's gone now. We had, uh, we had a lot of wind and uh, temperatures, in the, temperatures in the 40s and 50s, but it was enough with the wind to uh, really melt it down in a hurry. Right now, uh, we're expecting to hit 80 degrees today. So, I mean, we've gone from We've gone from the 30s, 40s, 20s, 30s, and 40s, and we're suddenly close to 80. So uh, it's fantastic. I mean, I wasn't even really prepared for this kind of warmth because I'm, I'm wearing a, it's a tropical weight shirt, but it's long sleeve. So anyway, I've got a long promised project that I'm bringing to fruition here. This is a uh, test lot that I did up for you in my uh, How to Load Super Accurate Ammo series and uh, we went through that we went through that by the numbers how to prepare the cases uh, select powder how to charge the powder everything seat the bullets neck turning and a lot of a uh, lot of things that you don't necessarily have to do but for super accurate ammo I find that it really pays off um, I've had some questions about I've had some questions about whether or not neck turning is um, Essential, you know. I know that there's a bench. There's a there's an F-class shooter out there that says that uh, he doesn't bother with it. Well, I can tell you this: that I find that it improves accuracy. If it doesn't, if it doesn't matter to him for the type of shooting he's doing, that's fine. But um, if it improves accuracy for me, I'm telling you that it works. And it's it's a it's a long-standing practice that has been used by bench rest shooters for many many years. So I'll leave it at that, regardless of what anybody, you know, whatever, regardless of what somebody is deciding to do for themselves, I, I'm still going to stick with neck turning because it works. In other words, it shaves, off, it shaves off those fractions of an inch that make a difference when I'm trying to find a really accurate load. It's not something that has to be done when you're, when you're uh, hunting loads or anything like that. I mean, we're talking about, we're talking about environment grade you know, improvements, <clears throat> bench rest grade improvements. And this is not a bench rest grade rifle. Uh, it's a sporter rifle. This is a Winchester Model 70, standard weight, standard grade. Um, I understand that this particular rifle has been discontinued by Winchester. Unfortunately, it's, it's uh, now only available with the uh, featherweight, which is, which is terrific. But for, for, for doing a lot of shooting, the heavier weight barrel gives you a little less recoil. It's one pound heavier. So uh, it's a little bit more comfortable to shoot uh, for long shots. Uh, freestyle, it, it, it hangs in there a little bit more steadily because of the extra barrel weight. It's got two inches greater barrel length, so it gives you uh, imp a slight improvement in velocity, somewhere between 50 and 75 feet per second, which is not tremendous, but it's, it's worthwhile, uh, especially for those long shots. And it's not an overly heavy gun to uh, carry in the field either. I wouldn't use this. I wouldn't use this, for instance, in, at extreme high altitude hunting. You know, uh, it, it's just not that type of rifle. You want to shave off some weight, and the featherweight is the way to go. But anyway, I've got a chronograph set up there. Um, before I shoot this test series, uh, I'm going to first of all just make sure that my barrel is uh, seasoned for the day. I don't want to be I don't want to be wasting some uh, good loads. So I've got a control, I got a control lot here. This is my standard go-to load that I've been using for many years. I mean, a long time. I've been using this load for close to 50 years. So um, this one here is, uh, when I say the load, it's not necessarily the bullet. I've used many different bullets, uh, bullet brands, types, but uh, this one here happens to be 130 grain Hornady flat base. Right now, they're one of the few bullets that I've been able to get a hold of. Um, these are uh, loaded with H4831, Hodgson H4831. And um, because I'm limited to what I have available for primers, these are loaded with Winchester WLR Magnum primers. So uh, being that the cases are close to 60 grains in uh, capacity, uh, that's, that's the break point for when you, you know, swap up to uh, Magnum Primer. So uh, I, found that, I found that the 270 Winchester can perform very well with Magnum, 
primers. You get just a little bit extra flash so that uh, it ignites that increased amount of powder. Not all 3006, not all 3006 uh, charges, thir most, most 3006 charges themselves are less than that. They're usually about 55 grains, 54, 55 grains. But when you're getting up to, uh, when you get up to uh, the 270 uh, lighter bullet weights uh, in the 130 grain and such, uh, it'll take a little bit more, a little bit more powder in that, in that same case. So anyway, um, I've got my drone with me also. Um, let me go set up that drone so we can uh, set, set the camera up down range and um, we'll follow along. But before I do that, I'm just going to, I'm just going to fire this test series into the uh, target. This is a, I would say this is a control series with the O4831 powder. So let's get at it. We'll put my hearing protection on, my eye protection. And uh, I just can't believe this. It's fantastic to get this kind of weather suddenly. So long awaited, long, long, long awaited. I find my target down there. There we go. And also, too, I just want to make sure my rifle is still sighted in. I've shot uh, a few different loads. I've shot a few different uh, loads in recent times with this rifle that uh, I may have changed the scope setting. So, uh, and I checked the board to make sure the board was completely free of obstructions. Always do that, always. So here we go. And this is a loopholed uh, two and a half to eight power scope. I'm getting a very, very slight breeze. I'm going to wait for it. Uh, it's coming from, uh, according to my flag, my American flag here, it looks like it's blowing in from three to nine. So it's a crosswise wind. This is a pretty mild load. Um, I mean, it's certainly not a uh, it's not a not a tender load by any means, but it's it's um, easy going. It's 30 or six size loads do go. So let's see what that how that printed. I'm gonna turn my hat around so I can get closer. Well, that one there is down at a. Uh, that one there is down at five o'clock outside of the outside of my small bowl. So we'll fire another one, see where it goes. See if I have to make a scope change. Fire one more. It looks like it's about uh, three quarters of an inch from the first one on the same area. You know, this is a duplex reticle, eight power. The target I'm shooting at. Uh, It's a bench rest target, so it's uh, not not really scaled for this scope, but it's enough. Well, that one went into the second hole. I'm going to bring that scope up by. Let's see. I'm going to bring it up by uh, two inches, and I'm going to come left by a half inch. That should be close enough. I 
I'm not on a grid. I'm not on a grid style. Um, so we want to come up two inches. Let's see. One, two. And uh, to the left, I think a half inch would do it. Barrel slightly warm. You know, heavy barrels. Um, see, we're going to go half inch, two clicks. One, two. Heavy barrels uh, take longer to heat up, but they also take, because of their mass, they take longer to cool down. So, you know, it's a... As I've said in the past, I don't... Uh, I don't uh, have any issues whatsoever with standard weight or featherweight barrels for accuracy. They, they work just fine. Peter. What are you doing? You're outside in the garden or what? No, I'm at the range doing a video. Oh, you are? Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so cool. I, the camera's rolling. I'm shooting my 270. I'm, I'm using some test loads. Yeah. So, yeah. so let me give you a call uh -huh. back after this because I got the camera running and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. All, All right. Take All care. Right, man. Take All care, buddy. Right. We'll see, see you. Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw one shot up there. I know that this scope always um, this scope always reacts right on the button, so I think it'll be close enough to uh, continue along. I don't need to fire up too much ammo. Um, what am I doing here? So you gotta watch it when you get old. You know, you forget what you're doing all the time. So I'll drop this one last round in there. I'll set up my drone and then we'll uh, proceed with the test. Uh, it's, a do it's a double target, so I can put this one down the bottom and see how it is without ruining that last uh, shot group. Looks nice. The group is, uh, I should say, the shot is uh, just about dead center. It's a, it's a half inch high. I'll come down a half inch because these, this next series of loads might be a little hotter and they'll, they'll climb a little bit higher on the target. So I'm going to come down by two clicks. I don't know exactly what the dimensions of that target is. So. Let's see. Down. One, two. I'll come down three clicks. Okay. We set up the drone and uh, we'll get you down range so you can see what's going on. Well, that was a saga I don't want to repeat out here where there's no cell phone service. I'm trying to log in. I had to, I had to go walking around the uh, parking lot for five minutes to find a, uh, just a tiny bit of a signal. So the camera is now on. We're starting up. Take off. We've still got 79% uh, on this battery and I've got other batteries too. So we're gonna, 
Get this puppy into the air. We should have no issues now. We're logged in. So down we go. What mode am I in here? If you're in sport mode, you can just crash into things because there's no accident avoidance. So let's see, we'll pull it in close. And down a little bit. I can see it down there. Tighten it up a little bit, because I can zoom in with the uh, software I have. It's seeing its own uh, shadow down there, so. See if I can bring it down just a little bit more. I mean, I don't want to shoot it. That wouldn't be good. I'd have to be a pretty bad shot to hit that. Right now it's about eight inches above the target. I'm quite sure that my uh, ammo won't be that far off. And plus I'm a little bit off to the right. So, there we go. The camera's running, it's recording. Put my eye protection back on. Hearing protection. So, we're starting out with uh, 53 grains of uh, IMR 4350, and we're going to be working up in half grain increments because roughly it's a, uh, it's, it's about a 50, it's a 50 or so grain maximum charge, so 10% of that, that's what we're working with. So we're working uh, with increments just moving the decimal over, so we're just working with breast increments of uh, half a grain, which is proportional to this particular charge. That's the way to do it. Always, always do a proportional measure. You don't want to do half grain increments with a uh, 223. Uh, that's just way, that's just way too much. You'd be missing, you'd be missing the market uh, at that uh, higher level. So let's get this going before we uh, run out of battery here. I'm going for that first. The first target is going to be the middle. I see the drone is dancing around there just about uh, two feet over me. It's, it's, uh, it's fighting with a little bit of wind. Wow, <laughs> That's, it went into the center of it just like it was a clock dial. Awesome. I mean, that, the next one could go four inches from it, we don't know. But that's, that's unbelievable. I'd say that uh, it's sighted in for that particular shot. <laughs> you never know. I mean, that would have that poked a squirrel in the eye. Well, that one's about, uh, that's the other side of the center circle. Not bad, not bad. Of course, this is, this is one of the lower power loads. This is the lowest power load. But, you know, for, for a super accurate load, Here we do again.
Okay, so right there, that one, that one moved out uh, just. I've got a one and a sixteenth inch group. It's it, it's pretty much MOA. Uh, not bad powder so far. I'm gonna leave one. I'm gonna leave one round unfired out of four because uh, I like to. I like to go back and fire a composite load afterwards. We'll give that just a little bit to uh, cool down. Doesn't require much. Take a sip of water. Check on my battery power for my drone down there. We get still 58%. I may have to call it back before we get too far into it and change the batteries. But uh, we got plenty. All right, let's proceed. Oh, that controlled feed, I love it. I love it. Now we're going for the uh, top left, top left target. Just checking to make sure my drone's out of the way. These targets are smaller, so uh, the, they're a little bit more demanding, which is good. I have to, I have to really struggle to get that uh, cross here to bisect those tiny little targets. That's, you know, that's that's sometimes what it's all about. When you have a bigger target, you know, you can get a little sloppy without uh, knowing it. That one went uh, dead center. About an uh, inch and a half high. Well, that one's that one's kissing the other one. Nice powder. Where have you been all my life? It's also uh, because it's less powder than uh, H4831. It's it's a lot milder too. Who knew? I know a lot of people knew, but it's just something I never bothered with. So let's see what this one does. That one dropped about uh, that one dropped about a half inch, but right now I've got I've got a three quarter of an inch group there. Not bad. That's the second that's the second batch. Check out my battery. Probably be good to. Uh, Oh, we still got 47%. We just give that the heat a chance to uh, escape out of the barrel because, you know, mirage, mirage is not just caused by the barrel. Most of your mirage is caused by the heat coming out of the end of the barrel, just like a smokestack. So uh, let that, let that uh, cool off for a little while. You know, some people like to shoot it jet of air down there to help clean it out a little bit, but we'll take our time. we got plenty of time. See how it's doing. I'm not seeing any, uh, I'm not seeing much mirage right now, so we're going to go for the third. This is, uh, one and a half grains heavier than the first charge. Top left target. 
top right, what am I talking about? Top right target. A little bit of mirage. I have to check in. You know, when you get mirage, the target, the scope, the, the scope cross here is a staying still, but the target is moving around a little bit, and that's that's the refraction of that's the refraction of air that takes place from mirage, and uh, that's what you get on a day like today. Um, I would say, based on what I see, I'm getting about a half inch of movement. Uh, so you got to be very careful to watch your movement and, and to see if, see if you can figure out where the center is. It's hard to tell. That's that's what uh, that's what gets uh, bench rest shooters going in a lather because uh, you know on the, the the best am the best ammunition in the world, the best rifle in the world, barrage can really freak you out. It can uh, it can it can do different things that. Uh, We have plenty of play of battery. I can finish up this group at least, maybe the next one too. Let's see if I can. Well, I would say we have less than a quarter of an inch of mirage right now. It's shimmering, but I can I can pretty much see where the center of it is. Brother. It's a struggle to figure out where that mirage is putting you. That one went to uh, 10 o'clock. Of course you're seeing it. Wow. I don't have two holes, it's just one hole. It's not even much bigger. Cool. Is this gonna be the load? Boy, that thing is really tough. Dancing all around. I can't, I can't say whether that was mirage that caused me to go high. It went, uh, it went a half inch high from the other one, a little bit to the right. It's, it, mirage right now is uh, forcing that target to jump around. I'm not going to shoot anymore until we uh, let this barrel cool down because I'm just getting way too much mirage off the barrel. Uh, we still got two. We still have two loads to go. So far, I mean, everything I'm seeing, I don't have a bad load out there. Uh, they're all they're all good. I mean, they're all for big game loads. It's just it's just uh, no issue whatsoever. Um, even for even for coyotes. 500 yards for coyotes with this rifle, no problem at all with any of those loads. Um, wood checks, 300 yards, no problem at all. They're, they're, they're all good. They're all, uh, they're all very close to MOA. How can you beat that? So we're going to bring the drone back. We've got 25%, so uh, we'll give you a view of... Uh, the surroundings here, see if we can still see any snow out there. It's disappearing quickly with this. Uh... Take, 
take my earplugs off, make sure that uh, I can hear in case. This will alert me if there are any um, aircraft in the area. So I'm up to 150 feet, 190, 200. We'll bring it up to 300. We're not too far from an airport around here, so I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, not all planes have uh, transponders, so I don't want to be into anybody's way. It's a little bit windy up there. When I see a jitter like that, I can tell that uh, it's fighting the wind. Wind aloft, 312 feet. And there's Lake Winnipesaukee off in the distance. That's where we are. Okay. I'll bring her down. Battery level is low. The aircraft will go to the home point in 10 seconds. I guess it's deciding to go home. Go home. It's out of my hands now. Of course, I could cancel it, but that'd be a stupid thing to do. We have 17% left on the uh, time right now. So. And it all it always uh, turns away from uh, it always turns automatically the same direction that uh, it was facing when it took off, and I always face it away from me just because it's a lot more natural. So. Uh, I'm going to cancel this landing because for some reason I'm coming in a little bit off target here. I don't want to do that. I do it manually. There we are. to position it a little bit. Hard to tell when you're over the target, you know, you get parallax. Parent movement of the... It's hard to tell when you're dead over it. Depth of field issue. Back to me just a tiny bit. To the right. There we go. We hit the bullseye. Okay, we'll change the batteries up. And we'll get back to you with the next uh, with the next uh, six rounds, and that'll finish it up. So far, it's going great. Well, given the limits imposed by this uh, heavy mirage, and uh, there, there's a breeze out there. All told, uh, that's e that's easily you know a combined half inch easily. Could be more. I'm very pleased with this load, so, all these loads so far. We'll see what happens with the final ones. The barrel is uh, cooled quite a bit. I think we can proceed with the last six rounds. I don't see, I don't see the crosshairs uh, fighting right now. Let's just sit there for a second, and see what it does. See if the target stays. Well, there's about there's about an eighth of an inch mirage, eighth to a quarter of an inch mirage. That's not bad, but that can be that can be an eighth of an inch variation. You know, a lot of times people think that they have a rifle that 
string shots. Be very careful that you, it's not it's not your it's not your mirage is stringing your shots because that's what can happen on a day like this. Your target will tend to climb higher and higher. What you tend to do is the target's not climbing at all. It's the the refraction is bending is bending the image higher. You know it, it's it's float the image is floating high. If you've ever seen a uh, truck or a car coming down a long highway on a hot day where the pavement's hot. The truck seems like it's floating off the ground. It's really, it's, I mean, obviously it's on the ground, but it looks like it's off the ground, and that's exactly what's happening here at 100 yards, is the target will tend to float, and the hotter the barrel gets, the higher the target gets. So the shots will progressively, you're chasing the shots is what you're doing. In other words, you're shooting at where the image is rather than where the target is. So you're stringing your shots progressively higher, and that's what, that's what happens a lot of times, especially with thin barrels. Uh, you know, like a, the old the old Mini 14s. I mean, they weren't grand accuracy to begin with, but that's what would happen a lot of times is because those thin barrels would get hot. The you know you you chase your shots, and you don't need to do it with you don't have to have a scope to do it. You know, crosshairs crosshairs would do it just. I mean, uh, crosshairs and and iron sights would do it just the same. You can see the mirage more apparently with a scope, but it's still there even if you you're just using your naked eyes. So let's get the uh, drone down range. Turn the camera on and uh, start her up. Take off. I'll do that when I want. It's always telling me what to do. Okay. Okay, I'm going to run this down range. Breakneck speed here. Okay, I'll bring it in. I can edit that in closer. Camera's running. That'll beep a little bit probably as the wind is pushing it around. So now we're up to, uh, what are we up to? I can't see it without my glasses. Okay, we started out at 53, 53 and a half, 54. Now we're up to 54 and a half, and then we'll be final, final, finalizing it at 55. So this is 54 and a half grains of uh, IMR 4350. And uh, I believe that this is the top load listed in the book. Um, this is a strong rifle. I'm, you know, I, I'll go a half a grain. I'll go one increment greater just to, uh, just to see if it might be there. Sometimes some rifles like to have that, that extra increment. Um, and as long as it's not, as long as it's not showing uh, any, any degree of um, overpressure, we're fine. See if I can find my, there's it, my drone. We're way out of the way, so. Good let off. Dead center, that's always a good sign. One, two and a quarter inches high off the uh, center of the bullseye. I mean, that's, that's an ideal, that's an ideal setting for uh, shots out to about 300 yards. If you wanted to go out to 400, you'd probably want to be closer to 
four and a half inches high at this range, but this is, we don't have any such shoot, we don't have any such range as, as that here. Like I say, this, that one fell uh, just about exactly a half inch, uh, I should say an inch, from the other one. All right. And these are not target bullets. This, this, these are just one of the mill interlock, quantity interlock bullets. Not bad. It's about an inch and a quarter, inch and inch and three eighths. Um, we'll move right along and finish it up. Bottom right. Dead center again. I like this powder. I mean, it's, it's not fussy. I'm not getting supreme accuracy. I'm getting good accuracy. But uh, I mean, it's not a fussy powder. I, any one of those, any one of those uh, shots would have brought down the same woodchuck. No problem at all. It's a very stable powder. That's why I like extruded powders. I might have hit that, I might have, uh, I got that one, that one's, that one's kissing the first one very, very nicely. I could tell when that went off, it just, it just seemed nice. I don't know why it seems that way, but. <laughs> yes, sir, Bob. That is, uh, Three quarters of an inch, center to center. Well, I like that. So there you go. I'm gonna open up this bolt. And um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fire a composite group. I'm gonna take all those, I'm gonna take all those shots, I'm gonna put them at the bottom of that uh, big diamond. And uh, See what kind of group. See what kind of group they all are. So, starting with shot number one. Where's my drone? I see it down there. We're quite a ways. There's a little bit of wind right now. 130 grain bullets. They got pretty good uh, ballistic coefficient, so they're not bothered too much by wind, especially at this range. But. Uh, We'll see what happens. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna load them all up. Starting with the so the first shot is gonna be the first shot's gonna be the uh, last shot. As the Bible says, the last will be first and the first shall be last. And uh, five shot magazine, I like that. 
and there we go. Keep an eye on which is which. We're going for the bottom of the diamond. Putting it right at the top of that uh, candlestick at the bottom. A lot of mirage, but I'm just going to average them out. That's number one. Putting that in there. Make sure we didn't get into the other uh, target. Oh, you can see that. that one go? Three. I've got an inch and a half. I've got an inch and a half group so far with uh, loads that are all over the place. We we got half inch, uh, half half grain between them. That's why I don't get too I, I don't get I don't get too lathered up about uh, you know fussing around with charges. Four. We got a two inch group. Yeah, that's, that'll bring home, that'll bring home a uh, pronghorn any day out to uh, 350 yards, no problem. But you know, naturally you always want to have a better group than that, but this is what, this is what rifles used to shoot like before they had better bullets. the last shot. Well, that's a dandy group. That group right there is, is that's probably better than you'll find from most factory ammunition. So there we go. I'm gonna, that thing has been beeping right along, probably irritating you. I couldn't hear it that well. There you go. That's a, that's a pretty nice looking group for, for a composite. Remember, that's, that's 53 to 55 grains. 53 to 55 grains, that's a, that's a lot of powder. And yet, uh, the rifle's performing like that. That's why I like extruded powders. That's why I like Winchester Model 70s. Just can't beat them. So we head back home. So, let's take a look at the performance of this rifle here, and the loads. Now, in my experience, you know, Hornady interlock bullets, are, they're, terrific, they're terrific bullets for, uh, I mean, superb hunting accuracy. Um, if I can expect, whatever I can expect out of those, however, I can expect to trim off at least 30% with, uh, you know, Match King bullets, Sierra Match Kings. Sometimes even Nosler bullets will do, uh, do a little bit better. But for a run-of-the-mill bullet, they're, they're very good. So let's see what we got. I was shooting the same kind of bullets with me, uh, my old load, the uh, H4831. That's an old, old canister of powder that I bought, uh, I think it was uh, 1990, 1991. Um, Leading edge to leading edge with my scale here. That would be center, same as center to center. Exactly three quarters of an inch. That's, that's this load right here. And as you can see, I, that's where I made my adjustment. So anyway, we've got uh, really nice accuracy. Three quarters of an inch group in that uh, 4831. So I'm looking to beat that, or at least be as good as that uh, for the same velocity. And what I really liked, like I say, is the fact that it was much milder recoil because it had significantly less powder. We're talking four, just about four, four and a half grains less powder. That's a lot less recoil. 
Um, this first group, this is not a precise scale. This is this is good enough for good enough for government work. Leading edge to leading edge, though, I'm getting at least uh, I'm getting exactly one inch one inch group with this first with this first uh, series. No, I'm sorry, that wasn't the first series. That was the second series. The first series that was 53 grains of powder, right dead in the middle of the target here. That's uh, one one inch to that hole and uh, seven, almost exactly an inch to that hole. So I've got I've got here this uh, this this first three shots right here in the center. That's exactly an MOA group. That's uh, one inch at 100 yards. That's how MOA is classified. It's not it's not one inch at whatever range. It's one inch at 100 per 100 yards. So, the next group, a little nicer looking, um, but it's also one inch. It's just a, it's a, I think it's a little neater looking. It's this group right here, one inch. You can see it's just, uh, this, the, the center group is uh, an even shape, this one here wander a little bit. You know, this can be this can be a little bit of mirage. This one here I can tell just by looking at it. It's probably about an inch and a quarter or more. Let's see. Uh, just slightly less than an inch and a quarter. About an inch and uh, three sixteenths. That would be this. That's this group up here. Moving down. So next one, we've got one and uh, one and three eighths. Not a lot of bad looking uh, bunch of shots. I'll take any one, any one of them hunting in a pinch, but that's one and three eighths. And you notice that they're not they're not moving around on the on the paper. They're all pretty much staying uh, obediently where I'm aiming. Uh, they're climbing a little bit naturally as velocity goes up, uh, you know, shots will climb. This last group really looks nice. What is this one? Uh, this one is, it is nice. So that one's three quarters of an inch. A very nice, very nice looking group. That's this last one right down here, three quarters of an inch. So. Um, can't beat it. Can't beat it. I love this rifle. Uh, it's all packed up, ready to go home. And uh, it's been a fantastic day. A lot of, lot of stuff accomplished over the last few months. Uh, we've, been, we've been cooking. <laughs> we've, been doing, we've been doing all kinds of stuff to fill in time, praying, whatever we needed to do to um, fill in the time until this weather came back. You know, I don't have I don't I don't have southern weather that I can go out and shoot all year long. You know, the the snow is uh, rather it's rather difficult when it gets when it gets um, so you can't you can't even walk around it. It's it's just not good, and it gets too cold. I mean, uh, you know, unless you uh, unless you want to you know shoot under those frightful conditions, I'm I'm not going to go out I'm not going to go out with moon boots on and you know. Uh, heavy gauntlets and all that. It's just, it's just not, it's just not uh, good. So, and and you're not going to find out much. I mean, you can't even, you can't even get out to the range. So anyway, thanks for watching. I particularly thank my Patreon donors. You've been fantastic helping me out. You know, this is the stuff that costs a lot of money. You know, buying buying a bunch of bullets, and um, buying powder. Uh, prices are frightful right now for primers. Primers of tripled in price in the last uh, in the last three years um, it's, it's easy it's easy to sp spend hundred and twenty five dollars for a thousand primers right now not including not including if you if you're ordering you got to pay a hazmat fee which is another twenty five dollars on top of that and the shipping uh, oh, holy mackerel I mean you, you can get up easily to hundred and fifty five 
$160 for a thousand primers, which I used to I used to buy a thousand primers for thirty-six dollars. And match grade primers cost you fifty. Uh, that's those days are unfortunately very gone. So that's why I need your help. If uh, you can help me out whenever you can, I mean, you know, a one-dollar donation a month is that that's that goes a long ways. That helps me out. Um, and uh, I'd like to bring you some other rifles. I've, you know, there's there's some other there's some other things that um, are going on out there. There's some new uh, new cartridges. Maybe I'd like to uh, see if I can round up a rifle or two to uh, test out some of these new uh, cartridges. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Be sure, whatever you do, to hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell, too, so you know when I'm around. Benny's uh, doing great. Uh, he's, I couldn't bring him today. It's just too, too hot for him to s sit in the truck. Um, so he was, out, uh, he was out shopping with Mom. So uh, you take care, and God bless.